Okay, in this video we're going to look at periodic functions in conjunction with Laplace transforms. So again, this is for those of you that are uh, most likely taking a differential equations class. So I've got my function here. We, we're just going to look at functions g of t where the domain is from 0 to infinity. So we're going to say it's periodic. Well, it is periodic if g of little t plus capital T equals uh, just g of little t for all t greater than zero. So again, that's why the greater, you know, greater than zero restrictions in there because we're going to look at functions from zero to infinity. It turns out the Laplace transform of g of t that's equal to the integral of zero to capital T of e of negative s little t multiplied by g of little t dt divided by one minus e to the negative s capital T. So. I've seen a couple of different books. They like to use little t's and big t's and tau's, so I'm going to stick with that convention. Um, I don't particularly like it, but just to, to hopefully line up maybe with, with, with you know, the way your book describes it. So in this video, I'm going to do a proof. I'm going to prove this. So if you don't want to see the proof, start skipping ahead. And then I'm going to do one specific example. This is going to be part one of at least uh, uh, two parts, maybe more, uh, probably more. So uh, feel free to, to dig around if you need some more of this stuff, because I'm not going to get it all done in this video. So just again, recall, uh, you know, a function, you see periodic functions all the time. You usually start seeing them, maybe in algebra, typically you start seeing them in trig, you know. For, for example, um, you know, the ones we always see is just something like sine or cosine. So there's my sine graph. Okay, so notice, you know, if you go from 0 to 2 pi, once you start repeating, once you go, you know, once you go past 2 pi, the function just starts repeating itself. It just, it's just a carbon copy of what you had before. So for a function like sine or cosine, these have period, a period of 2 pi. And not all the trig functions have a period of 2 pi, but uh, sine and cosine definitely do. So again, just to remind you, what are we talking about with a periodic function? It's just one that repeats itself over and over and over after uh, some amount of time. And that amount of time here, the period 2 pi, that's what they're labeling as capital T. So just to, again, just to, to remind you on that. So let's do a proof, because proofs are great. So uh, let's justify this formula at the bottom. It's not too terribly... Miserable, but uh, let's do it just so we've got all of our bases covered. So Laplace of g of t. So recall the definition of Laplace transform. It's just the integral from 0 to infinity. We take e to the negative s of little t, and we multiply that by g of t dt. So what I'm going to do is, again, we're assuming that our, our function here is periodic. It's got a, a period of capital T. So once you go capital T units over, it's just going to get replace itself. Well, it turns out that's where I'm going to bust up my definite integral. So I'm going to integrate from 0 to capital T. We've got e to the negative st, g of little t, dt. Plus, well, then we would just have to go from capital T to infinity e to the negative st g of t dt. So when I'm using lower case t, I'm just going to say t. And when I'm using a, a, a uppercase, I'll say capital T. So if I say t, again, I just mean lowercase. So we're going to do um, a little change of variables. And we've, we've done this in uh, some other videos with Laplace transforms. So it's kind of a, a common trick here, or you know, a, a, just a little technique to make things work. So here what we're going to do is we're going to let uh, t equal capital T plus tau. They're trying to trying to bring in every symbol we can here that looks like a t. So, um, so likewise, that would tell us that if we take t minus capital T, that's going to be the same thing as tau. Okay, so we're only going to use this on our second on our second integral here. The first one we're just going to leave alone. Okay, so I've got the integral from zero to capital T, e to the negative st, g of t dt. So we're not doing anything with that part. Here we're going to do use our change of variables. So we would have to change our limits of integration. So the lower limit of integration was when uh, lowercase t equals capital T. So if we substitute that in, if we let lowercase t equal capital T, we would have capital T minus capital T. That would give us our lower limit of integration of 0. 
Well, it still doesn't matter, you know, if you, the original upper limit, uh, lowercase t was going to infinity. So infinity minus any finite value, that's still going to go to infinity. So that'll stay there. So we have e to the negative s. Now let's replace. Again, we said lowercase t. That's going to be capital T plus tau. And then we've got g of the same thing. We'll replace our t with capital T plus tau. And we're going to integrate again with respect to tau in this case. So. So far, so good. Now, we could do a couple things here to, to, to simplify this. One thing I'm going to recognize is that we could just break this up as e to the negative s multiplied by capital T times e to the negative s times tau, right? If you distribute this out, this is just properties of exponents. The other thing, the other uh, observation I'm going to make is that g of capital T plus tau, that's really the same thing as g of tau. And that's just because of that original assumption that this function was periodic. If you throw in a capital T, it just, you know, it's just what you had uh, previously. So those are the only two simplifications here I'm going to make on my next step. I'm just going to rewrite this. So 0 to capital T, e to the negative s, little t, g of t, dt. Plus, okay, so the e to the negative s capital T, that's just a constant. We're assuming s is a constant. We're integrating with respect to tau, so we can treat capital T like a constant. So I'm going to factor that term out. We've got e to the negative s times capital T. And then just going to rewrite everything. So we've got 0 to infinity. We still have e to the negative s times tau. That would be inside of our, our integral. And then again, just making this observation about this periodic function, we can replace g of capital T plus tau with g of tau d tau. Now, if you notice, this is actually just the definition of the Laplace transform. This is just straight up the Laplace transform. It doesn't matter that we put tau in here. Um, it's a dummy variable. So this is really just the same thing as the Laplace transform of g of t. And again, little t. So again, tau is a dummy variable. It doesn't matter. That's why we can replace it with just a t. Okay, doesn't matter. So let's keep going. We're almost there now. We just have to do a little bit of algebra. So let's see. Um, again, we're interested in finding the Laplace transform of g of t. And we said that that was equal to, okay, we've got this integral on the left, 0 to capital T e to the negative s lowercase t g of lowercase t dt. I said I was just going to call it t, but I'm, I'm saying lowercase t in there in some places as well, so sorry about that. Then we've got plus e to the negative s times capital T. Again, we said all of this is just going to be equal to our remaining integral. That's just the Laplace transform of g of t. So now all we're going to do is just solve this for um, the Laplace transform of g of t. So we've got the Laplace transform of g on the left side. Now I can subtract this function away, this expression, this e to the negative s t Laplace of g of t. On the right side, well, you'd be left with from 0 to capital T of e to the negative s t g of t dt, I'm trying to make sure I don't mess up my little t's and my big t's here. Well, we could factor the Laplace transform of g of t, we could factor that out of the left side. Well, then we would just have 1 minus e to the negative s times capital T left over. Again, we've got 0, not doing anything to the right side, e to the negative st g of t dt. And lo and behold, you just divide, and we get that expression that we had on the you know the very first page. So we've got from zero to capital T, e to the negative s t, g of t dt, all divided by one minus e to the negative s times capital T. Okay, so that's what we set out to prove. Okay, so now let's do a, a concrete example uh, using this stuff. The, the, the part that's in general that's going to be tricky, the part that's going to require some work, I mean the bottom part really, right, there's nothing to do, you're just substituting in values. 
so the thing that's going to be tricky to calculate is going to be this, this integral on top. So I'm going to do one that's relatively straightforward. Um, a lot of times, though, you're actually going to compute these by using Hebicide functions and uh, different tables of Laplace transforms. So that'll be the follow-up to this video. So, um, so I've got videos definitely on Hebicide functions because I just made some recently, so feel free to check those out. But let's just do one that's kind of uh, maybe a little, a little straightforward. Okay. So the one I want to look at, where'd my example go? Here it is. So, so g of t, in this case, has a period of 2. And g of t is defined by the following. It's equal to 1 if t is between 0 and 1. And it's equal to 0 if t is between 1 and 2. So again, you, know, a lot of, you use Laplace transforms a lot for you know, circuits. Uh, that's a big application. And you could just think about this as something that's you know, on. So it's on from 0 to 1. And then it shuts off from 1 to 2. So it's on, then it's off. And since it has a, uh, a period of 2, we now know that, hey, it just keeps repeating, etc. So we've just got a function that's on, then it's off, it's on, off, on, off. OK, whatever. So let's compute the Laplace transform of this. So we know, we're told that our function, I mean, that's given to us, that it has a period of 2. So that means that g of t equals g of little t plus capital T again was the period. So that's going to be 2. So that's going to be our capital T. And again, now I'm just going to uh, uh, fill in our formula here. So now I'm just going to fill in the formula. The only thing really I'm going to plug in so far is I'm going to replace the upper limit of integration. Uh, I'm going to replace the capital T's with 2's, and I'm going to try to integrate what's left over is what I'm going to do. So. The Laplace transform of g of t. Okay, so that's going to be the integral from 0 to capital T, which we said in this case is 2. We've got to integrate e to the negative st g of t dt. And that is all divided by 1 minus e to the negative s times capital T, which we said was 2. So I'll rewrite that in a second as negative 2s, but just to, to, to exactly copy that, that formula. So let's make a, a couple observations here as well. We could really, you know, we could really rewrite this. And so I'm not going to, I'm going to be a little sloppy here for a second, right? We could break this up from 0 to 1, and then we could go from 1 to 2, because that's the integral that we're computing. From 0 to 1, g of t is exactly equal to 1. So on this interval, g of t is going to be equal to 1. From the interval 1 to 2, g of t, that's going to be equal to 0. So you would have 0 multiplied by e to the negative st. So that integral from 1 to 2 is going to be gone. Well, from 0 to 1, we said g of t would be exactly equal to 1. So really, the top part simplifies to just the integral from 0 to 1 e to the negative st. Again, I'm using the definition of g of t on this interval from 0 to 1. We said it's equal to 1. Uh, again, integrating with respect to t. You know, we said the integral from 1 to 2. In that case, g of t would be equal to 0, so that whole integral is now gone. 1 minus e to the negative 2s. And now you're really just using a little bit of calculus to, to integrate. So, <clears throat> okay. so this one's not too terrible. Not too terrible. So we have 1 over 1 minus e to the negative 2s. If you've forgotten how to integrate e to the negative st with respect to t, recall to integrate that. You're just going to use a u substitution. So we're just going to use a u sub on that. I'm not going to go through all the gory details, but you would just let u equal the exponent negative st, and then you would go from there. So. If you're uh, sitting in differential equations, I assume that hopefully you remember this stuff. If not, again, I've got videos on definite integrals and u substitutions and changing limits of integration, so um, um, uh, feel free to check those out. Okay, so it turns out if you integrate e to the negative st, basically the shortcut says we're treating s like a constant. You get the original exponential function, e to the negative st, and you just divide by whatever the constant is. In this case, that's going to be negative s. So here we're evaluating this. I like to always emphasize, you know, because I've got S's and T's floating around. The original integral 
dealt with t, so it's going to be from t equals 1 down to t equals 0. So at this point, it's just plugging and chugging and simplifying is all we're going to do. So we have 1 over 1 minus e to the negative 2s. Again, if we substitute in t equals 1, we would have e to the negative s multiplied by 1 over negative s. And then we take our upper minus our lower limit. So then we would have e to the 0 when we plug in t equals 0, which is just 1. That's being divided by negative s. Since we're dividing by negative s, well, I could pull the negative out and make that a positive. And there we go. So technically, that's your solution. We're done. Um, just because I, I um, know that you can simplify this, I'm going to simplify this a little bit further because we can clean it up a little bit. So notice in the numerator, again, I could, I could take this negative. So I've got e to the negative s over negative s. I'm going to make it positive. I'm going to put the negative up top. We've got common denominators now. So I'm going to write that as 1 minus e to the negative s divided by s. So that's going to be everything there in my brackets. Probably should have left myself a little more room. I think I've got enough here. Maybe you wouldn't think about it. Maybe you would. It turns out that 1 minus e to the negative 2s factors. It's a difference of perfect squares. We can factor that as 1 minus e to the negative s multiplied by 1 plus e to the negative s. Right? Uh, you'll get the negative, and then on the outside, e to the negative s multiplied by e to the negative s. We add the exponents. That's going to give us our e to the negative 2s. And we're almost done. We can cancel out that 1 minus e to the negative s, 1 minus e to the negative s. And lo and behold, we finally have our solution. So 1 over s multiplied by 1 plus e to the negative s. That would be the Laplace transform of that periodic function g of t. So this one again was kind of set up to be nicely, or to be nice, to be able to be done nicely. g of t is simple, which makes this integral that we had to compute nice and simple. So we'll, we'll, we'll turn our attention to some more complicated examples here uh, in the next video. And in the next one, again, we're going to start talking about heaviside functions and how you can use those to compute uh, these Laplace transforms of periodic functions.